Right. Uh, I thought I'd uh, do a quick film uh, after the uh, decorating's finished, so we can go a tour around the studio. Mm. All down the end. Uh, this is the end where the. Uh, I'll come back a bit so you can get it all in film. The grey end is uh, the end where the uh, console will go where you will sit while we're working. Um, uh, and that will be something that uh, I'm actually going to build from good old MDF. Um, how, how it's going to be um, shaped and all the rest of it, I don't know yet. It's going to be a bit of a conundrum, that one. Because uh, we're likely to need base traps going across the corners. Uh, but we don't know exactly how to fit it all in until we've got speakers in place, blah, 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 and, and, and uh, most of the room and all the rest of it. So we may need to have something uh, temporary in place there just to put the speakers on and then uh, all the rest of it to do the rim measurement before I actually build anything for them to actually sit on. So that's, uh, that's one conundrum I need to get my head around. Uh, and then at this end, coming all the way around here, the future end. Um, there's going to be a sofa at this end. Um, you'll often see uh, sofas at the back of uh, recording studios or small home project studios, as this is really. Um, and they're not just there to look cool or for people to uh, have a nice place to chill out. Well, that's a good reason, good enough reason to have them. Uh, the other main reason is that uh, they sat there straight opposite the speakers, so they also act as a, a diffuser. You know, a nice bit of soft furnishings in there to uh, absorb uh, sound that's uh, going to be bouncing around and off this back wall. Uh, so today's conundrum. <laughs> uh, as you can see, this is all really, really nice at the minute. Uh, and now it's time to start demolishing it. Um, there's going to be a lot of holes drilled in these walls at various places for mounting base traps. Uh, up here, you can see how wobbly the ceiling actually is with all the light on it. It's not as good as it actually looks, but you won't see... Uh, this one's better. This is pretty flat up here. There's just a few, few ripples in it up there, which the light shows up very well. Uh, but you won't see that uh, because there will be above and between the speakers in the listening position there will be uh, a load of uh, panels up there on the ceiling anyway. Um, what I'll have to do is because of the, uh, the height of the ceiling and everything else, I've, I've upstairs in the uh, where the studio is at the minute there's a hanging um, ceiling absorber stroke ceiling cloud which hangs a long way down from the ceiling they obviously can't do that in here um, with it being a low ceiling as well there probably need to be a lot more on the ceiling in this place but there'll be uh, uh, panels up on here probably about two inches away from the ceiling um, covering a fair amount of it probably maybe back back to the door area I don't know yeah depends how it measures um, but they won't be the ones upstairs at the minute sat in frames so I guess they're about uh, the single thickness ones, which aren't base traps, uh, just the standard kind of mid-range absorbers are kind of, uh, what, four inches thick. So if they're not sitting on the frames, um, they'll still hang two inches away from the ceiling because you do need that gap there. But um, they'll basically, uh, <laughs> I need to find some way of mounting those, yeah. But there'll be some kind of mount in each corner on those, so that's uh, four holes drilled in the ceiling per <laughs> per um, absorber. And then coming to the back, this is today's conundrum, is this here. Um, there is a hole going all the way through the wall, which, uh, there it is there. Uh, which is for these uh, pipes and all the rest of it to go through to the, the external unit for the air conditioner. Uh, this is a, it's also a heater and it also uh, sucks all the moisture out of the room. Uh, it's a Toshiba unit. Bought uh, second hand on eBay from some rather uh, 
I won't say they were dodgy looking, but <laughs> there's some nice chaps up at a cliff in uh, Sheffield. Whether this thing is going to work or not, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I may have to get an engineer in to actually commission the, the thing when it's done to gas it up and everything. It's supposed to be gassed, but uh, I'll probably need to get it checked over anyway. But, um, yeah, now I've got all this uh, feature wall all, all really nice. I'm going to have to drill holes in it. Um, when I was battening the thing up, there's, um, there's a button that goes down here, one down here. And I have my uh, trusty detector to find out where they are. Um, but also for strength, um, there's a piece of wood that's going across here. Exactly where it is, I, I know not at the minute. Um, but basically, this is a one-man job, and it's going to be quite difficult, because this thing's quite... It's not heavy as such, but it's sizable. It's difficult to hold it in place uh, with one one hand and uh, mark things out with the other. But um, what's, what's basically got to be done is I've got to hold it uh, in place with one hand and uh, ensuring that this is going through the hole to the other side. Not just this, but all the cables as well. They're difficult to get through. I've had a few trial mounts before a paper just to make sure the hole was in the right place and everything like that. Um, but yeah, that's going to be held in place with one hand and then uh, somehow, why that's in place because it sits flat on this, uh, this bracket, uh, I've got to kind of somehow mark <laughs> where that bracket's to go while, while this is sat in front of it. Um, don't quite know how I'm going to do that yet. Uh, and then depending on where the holes line up, because I, I don't know um, which holes are going to line up with a piece of wood and which aren't, which is another bit of a conundrum, because obviously if the one's lining up with the wood, I don't want to particularly drill through that, because that's going to self-tap into that. But the ones that are going to drill through just straight through to the plasterboard with nothing behind. I'm going to have to use uh, plasterboard fixing bolts, which obviously drill a much, much larger hole for those. Um, so I think the solution for a start is to just put self-tappers through all the holes, so there's just a small hole there, and then see if I hit wood or not. <laughs> I've got wood! Um, and then when it doesn't hit wood, obviously I can uh, widen the hole out and use a... Uh, a uh, plasterboard uh, mounting bolt. There's two different sorts of those. I've got some left over from uh, when we did upstairs. It's basically you just go through. It goes through the plasterboard, and then there's either a uh, a T piece that widens out and holds behind the plasterboard, or the other sort kind of um, pull back as you pull the screw in and get wider. Um, and they're supposed to hold. I can't remember how much weight they're supposed to hold. I think it's up to about 25 kilos which uh, this doesn't weigh, so that'd be cool. Um, and that's about it. Just got the damp proof membrane there on the floor at the moment. Uh, we've got the carpets coming on uh, Saturday. I have to tell the carpet fitting guys not to uh, use their ramming tool uh, too hard against the skirting because it's not, uh, it's not uh, screwed or bolted in place, it's only glued with some uh, no-nails kind of stuff, so if they start belting it about too hard, it'll just smash it off the wall. Um, so they shall be told. Uh, and that's kind of about it. Eight and a half minutes of uh, more waffle. Um, and all the rest of it, I've got to uh, kind of make a plan of the room and decide how, what things measure and, and where they fit, which I know not yet, because um, there's also the uh, B3 controller which I started building uh, st at the start of the year which is uh, still in the same state it was before I started this job. I guess I'll start uh, completing that throughout the winter. I don't actually know how big that will be. Um, I know roughly the width of it but I don't know the depth. Uh, and as with all of these things, rooms like this always look much larger with nothing in them than once things are in them uh, because there's a, as well as the end station there's a, I've got a huge um, full size coffin case with all the uh, live stuff that's in it as well um, <laughs> pretty bloody pointless because I've never used it or switched it on even but uh, yeah it's a full size coffin case that with uh, it's got uh, an APC40 a BCR 
2000 keyboard in it and then a, a stand on it for a laptop and then all the uh, gubbins for the uh, power supply and uh, audio output and all the rest of it all in the uh, all in the coffin case um, and it's a probably about six foot wide now so uh, it takes a fair bit of space up um, whether it will fit along this wall <laughs> It depends on how, how far the console comes out and how far the console comes out will depend on the, how uh, how the base traps fit and everything else um, the console itself I guess with because the base traps will fit diagonally across those corners I'll uh, I'll uh, cut the back corners out diagonally to accommodate that but uh, how much needs to cut out and, and all the rest of it I don't know um, it won't just be a flat piece of wood either, it's got to have recesses cut into it and all the rest of it because the uh, studio controller that I built uh, based on the MIDI box platform, I don't intend on just sitting that on top, I want it to recess that down into the surface so it sits, uh, kind of sits flush apart from the, the meter bridge at the back which will have to stick up. Uh, and that's kind of it for today. Bye-bye.